Hello, welcome to Call on the Midwife. I'm Charlene Campbell, and I'm here again with a live. I haven't been on here for several months, but I've been working on some important projects that are um, getting to the point now where they're freed up. So here I am. I thought I would come on and do uh, a nice class for you. I'm going to um, go over some really simple points. I want to say thank you to the people who have joined um, or, you know, subscribe to my channel. I have a sleepy eye today. <laughs> um, I hope you're all well. And um, I'm going to go over some tips from my new little mini manual that's just been published. And, um, you know, some birth tips and main points for what to know for responding in low resource settings. Thank you for liking and watching my videos, especially the new Spanish bilingual film, which this is the um, the DVD that I just finished that's English, the English version of that that's available at midwifrytoday.com. And we're, we just finished filming the Spanish version of this, and it's now at, in post-publishing, uh, so it's in post-production, rather, so it's being edited and put together. So I'm excited about that. I'm also going to go over our birth reference card, which is a really nice, simple, like just a few little points that help you to um, keep yourself knowledgeable in a simple, simple way um, for responding to birth. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm not sure who's here today, but welcome. It's Colin the Midwife, and I'm Charlene Campbell. Hope you had a good holiday season. My other project that I've been working on is to, um, well, I've been doing some art therapy. There's my art therapy right there. <laughs> and I've also been um, decluttering and packing, and getting ready for uh, creating an emergency village or a birthing response center. Um, slash safe haven type of a place um, north of here where I'm going to be setting that up. Um, I watched a movie yesterday that's on Prime. If you, I don't remember the name of it, but it's about an Irish woman who has to live in great poverty in Ireland. Her father's an alcoholic and it's they basically, the mother dies and she ends up living off the street and eating out of dumpsters. And she goes to um, Korea or Vietnam when she's older. And she just sees all these children, literally hundreds and hundreds of children that live off the street. They live in like old buildings that are run down that are no longer used. And they are, it is the most oppressing thing. I literally was called to conviction for what I'm doing when I saw that because it's so convicting to see uh, the suffering um, that these children have. And in visions that I've had of the future here in the United States um, with the wars and the civil unrest and the corruption of the government and everything that's happening and the illusion of what is the hierarchy of our world basically that controls the world is going to cause a lot of upheaval before our savior jesus christ comes for the millennial reign and i know this and that is what this channel is about it's about preparing people to be smart wise and prepared physically mentally and emotionally and intellectually to respond in healthy ways that uh sustain life and create less suffering for mothers and babies. If you read the scriptures, who does it say will suffer? Um, it says the children, the babies. And, and it's true. Like if you look in Korea, Vietnam, uh, Ireland, during the difficult times in Ireland, they had terrible, terrible suffering among the children and the children would end up on the street. And when I had these visions, I mean, it was heart wrenching for weeks I would be disturbed by these visions they were so real where I would see literally hundreds of children gathering especially in the cities in these um, broken down buildings and they become sort of some of them become used by gangs but some of them are just hiding out and trying to survive and I've seen like these big trucks go pick them up and bring them 
to these places of refuge where we give them clothing. It was so cool in the movie. She takes them home, she baths them, she feeds them, she buys them clothes. And it's really beautiful. It's a really beautiful thing to see. How's everybody doing? I hope you're well. It's been a good three months of organization, enjoying the holidays with friends and family and uh, not very much family here. Been kind of solitude really, but I have some really close, close friends here um, who spent time with me. My husband is away um, in Seattle for the last couple of months really but we talk frequently. And so it's really been good though. I've got a lot done. I've done the Spanish film and I've gotten all packed up to move to a new place of refuge. Um, this place will still be here with a lot of the same supplies because I have a lot of supplies here and I won't be moving those supplies up. So I'll still be receiving supplies here. Um, I had an inquiry recently from uh, um, Jessica, friend of mine and a former a client who is going to be sending me some baby clothes and I gave her this address which is 1892 Salem Pines Lane Rexburg Idaho 83440 if you'd like to donate money or uh, in the form of a check to Charlene Campbell or um, uh, cash or you know, actual items that I have listed below. Okay. Um, please consider donating any kind of fabrics, sewing supplies, or um, the kit supplies, the, the mother baby birth kit supplies. Hope you guys are well. I can barely see myself in this and I can see that one eye is really low. I've had some less sleep lately than I normally have. I don't know what that's about, but I'm I'm getting better. It seems like the Lord's been speaking to me in the middle, wee hours of the morning. <laughs> it's good though. I love it. It's um, very comforting to be visited by the Lord. Okay. So I don't have a really clear plan except these because the spirit is going to teach this class. That's what I was told. I was told, sure, you're going to write this all out and then I will stick to it. But in a way it's nice this is what mother told me this morning, Heavenly Mother, when I was communing with her. Because I asked her what she would like me to say today for you. And um, and she said to not have a really rigid schedule about what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with these things that I'm planning. And then we'll just see how, where this day takes us. I'm going to take a sip of water. This is the first time I've kind of gotten made up. For a long time because I don't normally wear makeup at home like I just don't it's a lot of time and energy and but I like it when I wear it on on uh, something like this because I like it when other people do I like it when people look nice because I like looking at them <laughs> so I try to be conscious of how I look but I am conscious of this eye but that has to do with something I have no control over hope everybody's good how are you doing how was your Christmas? Thanks for joining my channel. I know that um, the short, the little shorts that I put up were really popular. I'm glad I can uh, be able to be a, a place of education for people to learn um, so that if anybody ever gets, you know, in your pathway that needs your help, it's actually snowing here and overcast today. And it's the snow is just, it's absolutely white everywhere. The sky, there's no sun and it's snowing and the ground is full of white too. So it's quite a bleak <laughs> winter, midwinter, bleak midwinter day here. Um, hope you're well wherever you live. And I hope you will take time to watch these because there's, this is gonna be packed with information and it's gonna be led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, the top of the uh, birth reference card says, prayer casteth out all fear, okay? And that's a, um, a definite true thing that it can help you to reduce fears to uh, pray. Okay. Now let's get on with this. You ready? Here we go. I'm just going to run through this because it's just so concise and it's so good. And it reviews a lot of the things that I've been teaching you. And I hope that you will um, watch the lives because they're really full of content, really good content. One, trust God and the birth process. Birth 
is a natural process. Assign someone to remain constantly with the mother. Be calm and reassure the mother. Place mother and attendant in a quiet place. In a quiet private area, yes, a privacy walls. You can make a privacy wall with people. They can turn their back to the mother and, and make a circle or, or a half moon around her to create a privacy wall for her. You can find cardboard or create curtains or anything that you can create to make privacy will help with the hormonal cocktails, which I've talked about multiple times. And, um, and anything that you can do to support that hormonal cocktail to stay high and elevated and privacy is a big one, okay? Um, so place the mother and attendant in a quiet private area. Keep mother hydrated and nourished. And I've talked before about different drinks that you can uh, put in your kit like coconut water, um, broth, like a plain broth can be good if it's organic. Um, also, uh, there's labor aids that we have the recipe for in previous videos um, with lemon and calcium, uh, calcium, magnesium powder mixed in and salt mixed in with the lemon and honey. And then um, you can also use uh, really highly diluted juice can sometimes be good. Okay, but it's the, it's the electrolytes that really help the mom stay hydrated because they help her tissues stay um, hydrated. So um, think about electrolyte balancing when you're thinking about what drinks to store or give a woman, if you have them, if you have the resources. And we carry little um, electrolyte packs plus bottles of water in our kits. Like you can see behind me here, I have the bucket. I have the nice dish that I really like, this beautiful stainless steel um, aluminum dish that's coated. And then I have more linens in there. And then I have a basket full of other things there too. So I have kits in all different places, in my car, in my RV, in my house. Okay, so that I'm always ready in a case I need it. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I've enjoyed the three month break because I do put a lot of energy and thought into these classes and they do take time. And I've been able to put my focus into something else. So it's been really healing and nurturing for me. I hope you're doing healing, nurturing creations and uh, bless you in, your, in all of your endeavors to learn this information. Okay, keep attendance hands clean and keep hands out of the birth canal. Yes, we sometimes teach different maneuvers like unreleasing the posterior arm in the case of a very, very, very persistent and unresolvable shoulder dystocia. That would mean unresolvable with all the different movements that we've taught you. Um, the first being hands and knees usually, if you're not on your hands and knees already. And then um, the other being McRoberts. Other things are the seesaw and lunging maneuvers, changing legs and putting one foot up on an elevated stool. Those are some things. So you, first of all, you would be, you know, supportive standing squat is another one. Um, any kind of hip rotations, hip movements, especially in hands and knees can be really, really helpful. And then putting one foot up and leaving one knee down can be really good too. So after you've tried all those maneuvers and you um, have tried McRoberts with suprapubic pressure. That's pressure just above the pubic bone, which I've talked about. And that's an external movement. So we recommend all external movements, especially if you don't have gloves and you don't have the experience and whatnot to go inside. And so the, um, the shoulder can sometimes just get stuck here above the pubic bone. And so what you do is you, you use quite a bit of force and you push it with the heel of your hands or one hand to the towards the chest. And then what it does is when the shoulders are like this, when they're wide, they have a wider circumference, you know. But when they are squeezed together like this, they become a much smaller circumference, okay? Anyway, that's a little off the, the list, but just to let you know that sometimes we will have uh, we will teach this method, but we recommend still that you wear gloves or have your hands as clean, as clean as you can. And you've tried everything else. 
is you go in and just um, splint the posterior arm and gently pull it out. And then that will usually almost always, always, it will always release the anterior shoulder that's stuck behind the pubic bone. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going. How are you doing today? I'm going to try to rush through this. Not rush, but just move through it so we can move on. So that's keeping your hands out of the birth canal unless it's an absolute emergency. Let mother push at her own pace. That's number six. Avoid pulling on the head. Let have mother led pushing. And then on the bottom here, it says um, items needed. So these are the basic, basic, basic items. These aren't the full birth kit that we recommend, you know. Um, and you can go to Emergency Villages on Facebook to find the kit list. And so we recommend you have a Ziploc bag for the placenta to be carried in, a baby blanket and a towel, minimally. So you need something to absorb fluids, something to wrap the baby in, and something to... Um, it's nice to have something to hold the placenta in, but it's also nice to have a container for her to have the placenta in. Um, and so what could you use for that? Well, like in this kit, I have this white container, but then I also have a metal bowl in there. Okay. Now that was page one. Now we're going to go to the next page. I've done this before, but oh, it's been a while since I've done it. And so I really wanted to review it, especially since I've had like 500 new subscribers. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's just the work of God is rolling forth because I just do all this for him and for mother in heaven. And I just want to help there be less suffering. And when I saw this uh, movie with these children all huddled in these buildings with no families and stuff after these post-war issue, you know, issues in their countries, I just thought, oh my goodness, what a amazing um, opportunity we have to be of service. So I'm put making myself available <laughs> in any way I can. All right, we're gonna keep going. Number seven. First, it says at the top, invite the divine assistance of angels to guide you. So yes, invite the divine assistance of angels. And um, our class is called the Errand of Angels. Um, for the last seven years, I've been teaching in you know, several different states and several different provinces in Canada. And it has been very successful and in teaching women how to respond in safe ways and let go of the fear. And especially the, you know, the Hollywood version of birth, which doesn't support the hormonal cocktail to stay high and elevated. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining me, Toga. <laughs> Thanks for your comments. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep going. Number seven, at birth, check baby for breathing. If needed, gently turn baby's head down to drain fluids. And I've talked about that as postural drainage. You know, just a little thing about mucus. If you watch, and just the way we're, we're sort of, uh, the narrative has been that, oh, all these, this mucus has to be sucked out if we hear the mucus, but no, it doesn't necessarily. It oftentimes, it just means that the mother, when the mother breastfeeds the baby, that will help the lungs expand because the baby will be taking nice deep um, nasal breaths and the, ba the baby's lungs will expand. And really breastfeeding helps to work mucus out better than anything. And people don't realize that, but it's really true. Okay. And, um, and also just remember that those little sucking um, devices that are um, look like little, um, you know, they're, they're like the nasal devices, but they're, they use them with babies. Those cause a vagal response in the back of the baby's throat that can cause them to gag and it's not good. It can cause breathing issues. Okay. So when you're doing, I was going to stand for this. Um, when you're doing a, when you're helping a baby to breathe this way, or just helping, it could be the baby's not breathing, or it could be the baby's too, you know, quite mucusy and you feel like they need to be cleared or drained so you hold them in this reverse position and you just stroke from the base of the spine to the head several times and then you can actually hold them this way you're supporting the head you're supporting the back on your arm so you're kind of holding the baby on your arm you can look here and then if the baby still isn't doing well 
and you could do this right at the beginning too. You would um, dry the baby's nose and mouth off nice. And oftentimes that will be enough. And this baby will be like, ah, 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 starting to cry. Okay. So I'm going to take my shawl off. I'm getting, <laughs> getting warm now. <laughs> it's been cold here though. We had cold weather. How about you? <laughs> okay. I'm glad that, um, that I could be here today and share my knowledge with you because it's, it's going to be really valuable going forward. And I'm excited to fulfill my, my purpose and I feel good when I'm doing it. So let's finish this list and then we're going to move on. Okay. Um, place baby. So we've talked about draining the fluids. We talked about wiping the baby's face, making sure the baby's breathing. You can check the, the cord. You can just feel the cord and you'll feel that it's pumping and you can actually count the baby's heartbeat. You can tell the baby's beating. So it should feel like a brump, 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 brump. not like a boom, boom, boom. So you know that's sort of the difference. Um, but it's about 140 to 160, the heartbeat usually that should be. And above 100 is good. Below 60, you need chest compressions. But you do still a full minute of breaths before you ever start check chest compressions on a newborn, okay? Because it's the it's the breaths that get the heart to pump, not the other way around. So remember that. Okay, <laughs> some important little tidbits in there with this. Okay, place baby skin to skin with mama mama for warmth and for all the benefits of kangaroo care. Um, it physiologically, the breasts heat up to heat the baby up. They'll cool down if the baby's too hot. Um, the skin literally is colonized. So not bathing a baby for several days after the birth is actually a good idea. I mean, you could wipe off the vernix or whatever and clean the diaper area, of course, but um, to leave that colonization on the baby's skin because the baby's gut, when the baby is born, the baby's gut is um, completely sterile of bacteria. It doesn't have, it needs to be colonized. And that's really, really important. And how does it get colonized? It gets colonized by the skin to skin contact with the mom because she has natural bacterial flora on her skin. So all the padding and sucking and breastfeeding and everything like that really helps to colonize the baby's gut. Of course, having only a diaper on the baby, no t-shirt, no nighty, no sleeper, nothing like that. And then the mom too, she should uh, have nothing but a bra or or else just her breasts is best really. A bra is kind of a barrier to the skin to skin, um, unless the mother really has to do that for some reason, like she's putting cabbage leaves in there after the birth and she's engorged and but take it off you know as much as you can when the baby's um skin to skin with you um, it's very very good for the baby's respiratory system for their uh digestive system for their um circulation their heart rates will will um stabilize their breathing will stabilize their temperature will stabilize skin to skin so like, say if the mother's in the shower, we would always have the husband, if he was available, to, to keep the baby skin to skin while she's in there. So the baby's always getting that skin to skin. Okay, now that was number eight. Plus you wanna keep the baby warm. So it's almost like having a, an incubator, a personal incubator when the, when you put the baby skin to skin. This is These are some rings that my daughter made those two. Yeah, my daughter, Giselle, I love them. And this one she made too, this one I'm wearing. Yeah, uh, she's at uh, GG Jewelry. <laughs> GG Jewelry, she's, I think I have her in some of my, um, some of my uh, descriptions, but my eldest daughter is a jeweler and she makes rings out of old spoons and stuff, which is really cool. <laughs> Okay, she made this one too that I have on my, I have it on my, this one's really pretty. It has a really neat stone in it. Yeah, she made that too. Yeah, she, she taught herself how to be a jeweler. 
actually. It's really cool. Okay. Skin to skin kangaroo care. Now number nine, avoid pulling on the cord. Keep the placenta and cord intact and carry with baby until the cord falls off. That's the best thing to do, yes. Plus 40% of the blood supply for that baby is in the cord at the time of delivery. So any kind of cutting before 10 minutes or more is, is a bit of a, well, it's a, it's a, on a spectrum of a bloodletting for that child and they could have anemia and also other issues that come from um, lack of um, red blood cells that they need at birth are uh, marginal um, brain defects that cause learning disabilities, you know, mild autism and other things, just by not getting their food full blood volume at the birth. So be prepared to leave that cord pulsing, please. Anyone who's listening, this is for everyone. This is for lay people. This is for nurses, doctors, midwives, everyone, because most of us work in high resource setting. So we don't have the luxury. We have luxuries that we don't have in a low resource setting, unless you've actually worked in a low resource setting and seen what can go wrong when things aren't done the way they need to be to support and maintain the high levels of the hormonal cocktail. That can be a serious it can cause serious poor outcomes. And in a low resource setting, you don't always have all the tools and medications and specialists to respond in a way that you would need to like to do a cesarean or to um, use oxytocin to try to get the labor going or whatever. If you don't have those things, then you want to respond in a way that's going to create the hormonal cocktail so that everything will just fall into place the way the divine design was meant to be for that birth and that's the wisest most intelligent thing to do in a low resource situation <laughs> my eye is so sleepy <laughs> i it's kind of funny but it is what it is i'm here i showed up i hope you're well i'm glad you're here um number 10 help mother establish breastfeeding and we've talked about breastfeeding um breastfeeding being very important in a low resource setting. According to research in a really true post-disaster, post-war setting, if a baby, if an infant is not breastfed, they have a pretty high risk of death, pretty much for sure. Um, because it's hard to get the formula, it's hard to get it clean, it's hard to get clean water, and all that can be a real problem. So we suggest if the mother is having a real super true difficulty which is extremely rare just so you know like for a mother to not be able to actually breastfeed that is not something that happens very often in real time it's partly it's because of the way we uh, try to have the baby latch on and people are like trying to control the experience rather than letting it be organic letting the baby um, be paced and have that own kind of subtle nurturing experience between the mother and the um, baby where it's, you know, they're both working together, mother led, baby led interactive experience with the breastfeeding, but no nurses or midwives are getting in there with their hands, trying to put the nipple in the baby's mouth or anything like that. So once that imprinting and bonding is, is allowed to take place in its natural nuanced state and pacing, that creates an amazing bonding creates amazing cocktails of hormones for the mom, which prevent postpartum depression, creates um, amazing um, long-term capacity to love and trust and low trauma response in the infant, and also establishes a very positive breastfeeding relationship, which is essential. And if you can't do that in the low resource setting, I recommend absolutely you need to find a wet nurse to feed the baby. That's the safest thing to do. Because if you put it in a bottle still, there's the idea of sterilizing the nipple and babies can die from bacteria on nipples. And your, your breasts are literally uh, divinely designed. So they're producing a natural analgesic at all times for that baby, which is just miraculously amazing, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. How's everybody doing? I'm getting a little thirsty. I can never tell who's here, but it seems like people pop on and off. So 
I don't know. I hope you have a long enough attention span who's ever watching this <laughs> to care enough about this because this isn't about thrills or just entertaining people. This is about God's work of preparing to support the daughters of God on earth as they give birth. And there will be millions of people suffering in the days to come because we're going through the tribulations, whether anybody believes it or not, doesn't matter. I know what I'm doing here and I'm here to support uh, education programs and supply gathering programs and sewing programs that support this program to uh, be prepared to help people in every community in the United States and Canada. And now I'm working on my Spanish program, which will be going globally, which I'm excited about. So stay tuned. I'll, I'll be announcing my Spanish. Uh, it'll be the this mini manual, which goes right inside the DVD, you see. And so it's really convenient. You've got the DVD, you've got the manual. And then what you can do is you, I recommend you put this inside a Ziploc bag. And, you know, after you've studied it and really maybe out, underlined and take notes and watch my classes and different things, watch the video multiple times. And then uh, do role play with some friends, get some women together, get some men together, get some friends together and do role play. You need about three to five people to do a role play really properly. And then um, put this in a Ziploc bag and stick it into your bucket. See, there's my, my pink bucket right there. That's my main kit and I could have this inside. And then, you know, if you need to reference something, um, each, each particular, um, thing like say you the mother's bleeding so then there it is mother bleeding so you just look and there is an outline of just the most basic things that you need to know about that and then here's another one um sorry baby not breathing same thing you're gonna have on the page opposite exactly a point by point so that's this book. You can get it at midwifrytoday.com. And it, it you can't actually buy this separate. It comes with the DVD, but you can get um, the online version of this for a huge discount if you buy this. Okay. So there it is. <laughs> I wanted to show you that too. So there it is. All righty. Let's keep going here. Um, avoid pulling on the cord. Keep placenta and cord. Okay, we've already read that. Help mother and baby, keep mother and baby together constantly, yes. In movies and in real life, I've seen it where, you know, everyone's holding the baby and the mother's just not even there, you know. Um, it's not good for the mother's hormone cocktail. So, like, you could have, like, a late bleed where there's too much going on, the baby's been, you know, passed around, and all of a sudden the mother's hemorrhaging. <laughs> Why? Because maybe her uterus is kind of tired and the excitement um, and too much outward energy being, you know, going on rather than her and her baby just connecting and having that inward experience um, causes the hormonal cocktail to deplete. And if that happens, she's at risk for hemorrhage for sure. She's at risk for stalled labor. She's at risk for hemorrhage and other things. Okay. So keep the hormonal cocktail high by keeping the energy quiet, the energy private. And, you know, it, it needs to be kept kind of close to the mo mother. There's an, uh, there's this idea of the Madonna cloak. It's like a, actually an energy field around the mother and the baby. And it, it's there for another three months. In some uh, teachings, they call it the fourth trimester, but it's a whole nother three month block that that mother needs to be connected with her baby. And the less we separate her, the less problems she'll have with returning her uterus to normal, having less postpartum depression. And I'm not saying she doesn't need support, doesn't need a lot of support emotionally, physically, mentally, and sometimes needs someone to hold the baby while she goes, has a shower. You know, yes, those are all good things. So keep records and this is right after the birth, though, she should not be separated from the baby, except for to have a wash, whatever that looks like. If it's a shower or um, somebody's just wiping her down, like getting that dish full of warm 
uh, water with a tiny bit of natural Castile soap in it. And you just take that cloth and you wipe down her legs and her buttocks or whatever. She can get blood and stuff all over her, but she might not be up to getting up. And it might not be a good idea for her to get up and go into the shower. And there might not be a shower if you're in a really low resource situation. So yeah, being prepared to wipe a mother down and have a receptacle if you have water to wipe her down. Um, we're almost done. How you doing? Thanks for joining me today on my live. I'm glad to be here with you. Um, keep records of basic birth information, the time, the date, and the names. Place identification on mother and baby with masking tape when applicable. Like if you were in a big, large room, if you were in a, you know, church or a community center and there's lots of babies or whatever happening, you would want to label. Okay, how are we doing? I'm going to move on. That's that. And I thought in between, I want to, I want to read one of my favorite um, authors, Melanie Beattie, um, from the language of letting go. This is one of my meditations I like to do each day. Um, and it has affirmations and stuff. So I'm just going to read. I've learned that the more vulnerable I allow myself to be, the more in control of myself I really am because we're more honest and we're not going into cognitive d dissonance by avoiding feelings or avoiding shame or avoiding trauma or whatever it is, um, anger. <laughs> yes. Today I will allow myself to be vulnerable with others when it's safe and appropriate to do so. Okay, just one little thing from there. And then, um, what else are we going to do? I had an impression just to let myself follow the spirit today. So <laughs> whatever's meant to be, we're going to do it next. Then I have a, a little promise that I made before was on my nutrition class, my last class. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's really good. It's got lots of good stuff on it. Um, but I talked about nutrition and I talked about um, these recipes and I wanted to give you another recipe since I promised I would. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to go through one more recipe out of this. I, the last time I gave you the recipe for the turmeric golden milk, it was a golden shake. So maybe I will give you something like that again, like, um, how about an almond vanilla green drink that might be a good one okay so here we go you ready now what i love to use for greens oh my goodness we had the most amazing lady here who made her own sprouts she had a this is my special thing my friend michelle gave me it's a dragon with a, it's got a little bead that glows in the dark on it. <laughs> um, I love her. Anyway, um, my, she used to sprout these sprouts and she had her own business and she would deliver me these big bags of sprouts. So there would be, um, my favorite were the sunflower sprouts. They were so delicious, sunflower sprouts. I don't know if you've ever had them. They're just delightful to eat. And in salads and everything but she did like 10 different kinds of sprouts and i would order some every week she would deliver them and so it says one handful of greens i would put a handful of sprouts so you can put a handful of sprouts and i would get sometimes the power mixes like they're really high they're really really good for you because they have so many nutrients and you can make your own sprouts like i have buckets full of sprouting mixes because we can if we can't get salad or something we could make our own sprouts we could they're, they're just packed with nutrition. So anyway, you could put in a handful of greens or sprouts. One quarter cup of almonds. One tablespoon of sunflower seeds. Now, some people don't want to eat seeds because there's things in seeds that can inhibit digestion. Um, so if you don't eat seeds, then you can just omit that. You don't need it. Two tablespoons coconut oil. One teaspoon cut stevia leaf. One eighth teaspoon vanilla 
and you just whiz that together. Now that's the almond vanilla green drink. Obviously there, oh, you have to put one cup of water and five ice cubes with that, sorry. And then you whiz it together. I'm gonna give one more. This is called lemon lime smoothie. <laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> These are really healthy ones. So puree one cup of water and ice with one cu cucumber. Cucumbers are really good for you. Um, one tablespoon virgin coconut oil. Greens. So your handful of greens could be sprouts, could be uh, lettuce, could be um, mixed greens, anything you have, you know, anything you have, kale or spinach. And then you, um, you put a half a lime one tablespoon of soaked almonds, which I think the almonds are really nice soaked. I love soaked almonds. You can skin them if you want to, and it makes them healthier for you too when they're soaked because they're almost like a pre-sprout. And um, one eighth a teaspoon of vanilla bean powder or vanilla, and then clear stevia to taste. That sounds delightful. Okay, we've had our recipe. Yay, I promised you I'd give you one. Okay, now I want to do a little something out of this book for fun too, so that you can see what's in it. Okay, so let's go to. I thought it would be nice to review some of the basic things that you should remember, just the top tips, you know, the um, in a nutshell kind of thing. So here we are. Key points. That's what this is. This is the key points page. Okay, you ready? Just take another sip. <laughs> I hope you're staying hydrated. That's one thing I've been really working on is drinking water, drinking enough water. And eating good. I'm, I'm on a no sugar, no potatoes, no rice. I've been doing that for two months. We even did it at Christmas. My friend and I had fun making recipes that were all healthy. And uh, I have a little cracker book. I've been making little fun little crackers from this book. Keto chips and keto crisps and keto crackers. And they're all within that uh, low glycemic index. So it's really healthy for your brain. It's healthy for lower seizure activity. It's good for brain trauma. It's good for any kind of mental illness that you're suffering from or uh, CPTSD going on a low glycemic uh, just a lifestyle. So it's like, it's not really a diet for me. It's just, this is how I'm eating now. It's been a couple of months and I feel great. So I highly recommend that. All right, here we are. Key points. You ready? These could be similar to the ones we just read because that's the one we gave out at our classes and this is a different one. But I think there, there's some difference. Skin to skin contact after the birth between mother and baby. Stay calm, centered, grounded, and in tune with spirit. Keep cord intact. Safer for mother and baby. These are all kind of review, but it's okay because it's said differently. Postural drainage for newborn. Just yeah. Shoulder dystocia, sticky shoulder, change positions. That's going to be your number one uh, most effective action. Okay. Mother begins showing signs of shock, help her into lying down position and help her stay present. Get eye contact with her and talk to her and call her back in and tell her that it's okay. Get her to focus on her baby, get her to connect with her baby as much as you can, okay? Because staying conscious almost is a choice with moms at times. It's good to have some of those little salts salt uh, bars you can break in half and just put them near her if she does faint if you have um, a kit that you're putting together and you want to you know make it a little bit higher than what you have right now that would be a good one to add okay um mother begins showing signs of shock yes we did that one. cord around the neck now i've talked about this in other videos if you can go back and look but if the cord is around the neck okay I'm just going to quickly explain it because I have so many new people in here and I know a lot of you watch this, uh, watch the, the shorts, but I hope you'll watch this too, this new one. 
Okay, if the cord is wrapped around the neck, let's say it's wrapped around the neck, doesn't matter how many times, several times, once, twice, two, three, four, it doesn't matter. So the baby is born, okay? You don't need to worry about it when the baby's head's out, even if you can see it, you know, say you can sort of tell, you can see those cords. Sometimes you can't really. Sometimes it's there, sometimes you can't. Don't panic, just be prepared to help the baby somersault out. So what are you gonna do? When the baby's head is coming out, you're gonna put your hands there and you're gonna support the head to stay close to the mommy's opening, her introitus, her vagina, her vulva, okay, her matrix. And you're gonna let the baby's body flip this way, like that, okay, so that the head stays closer to her vagina. And then you're gonna open or unwrap, okay? Now that is how you're going to do it. It's called the somersault maneuver. Okay. And you will go instinctual on that one. I brought this to show you today. Um, you'll go instinctual on that one. I promise if you just trust and pray and have the, the angels will be there helping you. Okay. Let's keep going. We're going to keep going. We're on page eight. If you have this manual um, the labor and delivery training for the low resource and emergency situations by Charlene Campbell with guest teacher Valerie Hall. If you have this, follow along with me. All right, we're going to keep going. Um, if baby is not breathing, give five slow breaths over newborn's nose and mouth. Watch for chest rise and fall with breaths. So the baby's lungs are small. You're going to put your mouth over the baby's mouth and nose breathe two three breathe two three but you're going to be watching to see if the chest falls rises and falls breathe two three breathe so slow like you're blowing up a little balloon you don't want to blow in too quickly or just it won't expand the lungs like it needs to. Okay, keep fluids and foods available for mother. Yes, we talked about having electrolyte drinks and um, especially after the birth to rehydrate and give nutritional support for breastfeeding and mother needs at least 500 calories more each day. Dense, high nutritional calories during breastfeeding okay so yes so make sure you allow for extra food for breastfeeding mothers so they can produce the breast milk they need and sometimes it is required to lower their workload so they're not putting out so much energy if there's a shortage of food okay and you're rationing which i know is going to happen <laughs> we're going to be rationing i mean when i saw that show with the all the children huddled in these little rooms it's on prime it's about an irish woman true story but she goes to vietnam and she just has so much mercy for these children and i think yeah good idea to have extra food extra clothes birth kits food extra fuel um get a bucket you know think about other people right now and you will be blessed for doing it all right, if you have limited supplies, gather what you can and be creative. Usually what you need is something to absorb the fluids. That's a really big thing. Something to wrap the baby in, something to put under the mom to absorb the blood, okay? And then mother begins to hemorrhage. Um, I think knowing how to do, um, well, we've talked about it in many of the other videos, okay? But knowing how to do, uh, proper massage on her belly, okay? And low down just above the pubic bone and you want to put lots of pressure on there and learn how to massage it, okay? And um, there's lots of videos back you can watch. But knowing how to do the manual massage of the uterus to a hard grapefruit status centrally below the belly button, above the pubic bone, and you want to hold it if it doesn't stay hard. You have to hold it until it stays hard, okay? and keep the hormone cocktail up for mama. Okay, and the other thing is you can use a, a tiny little sliver of the placenta in the mother's cheek. You just put it in the cheek. You can put honey on it or not. And you put it in her cheek and what happens? 
it's full of oxytocin, so it really can help. Okay, we've done that. We're at 49.49. 49. <laughs> 49.49. Well, I haven't sung yet. Maybe I'll sing now because that'll help give me energy. Mm -hmm. Singing gives me energy. <laughs> Every time I do it, <laughs> I love singing. I hope everybody's good. I'm good. I've been uh, working on some amazing projects. I am so excited about the Spanish film. Thanks to everybody for watching it. We have like over 2K views on some of those little, that's only like a tiny little example of the class that we filmed over like a week long, several days of filming um, with different interpreters and such. Um, and different groups of people doing scenarios and um, narrations and whatnot. And that is a Spanish bilingual film. It's not ready yet. It might be a few months yet. <laughs> but anyways, maybe longer. Things take longer than I usually plan they will, but that's okay. I had three months to work on it, and I've got it to the to the production, post-production phase now. So it's with my, my buddy, Alan, who did the work on this film and he'll be doing the work on that one too. So it's exciting. Okay. So I've got my special little book that I really like, and I don't know what I'm going to sing today. Any requests? <laughs> Who has a request for me? I'll sing it. <laughs> I'll just ask God. Mother, I've already lit the candle for us, as you can see. And I brought in a few little things to, uh, Bring it in this feeling in here. I have a picture I really want to show you. Here it is. It's a big picture. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> I really like. I love it. <laughs> okay. All right. I just opened this and I'm just kind of looking through to see what should I say. I always sing on my lives. And so I feel like singing is so healing. It's so good for you. And it's good to uh, listen to it. And it's also part of birth. You know, it's part of um, it's part of being a midwife is singing babies out sometimes or singing to mothers after. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's find us a song. We're gonna find something simple. Oh, this is simple. This is a good one. It's called May There Always Be Sunshine. <laughs> Yeah, have you heard it? It's just, a, I think it's like a little lullaby kind of thing. Okay. Here, sing. May there always be sunshine. May there always be blue sky. May there always be mama. May there always be me. I think um, going into birth with a strong self-worth is a really big bonus, you know. Um, so much of us have grown up in codependent, you know, energy where we, we really had what, what Ross Rosenberg calls it as a self-love deficit disorder, which I think is much more appropriate than codependent, which has a lot of shame and energy to it. Um, I think when we don't love ourselves, we don't know how to really respect, love, and honor ourselves. We get caught up in, in unhealthy relationships and unhealthy situations, and we don't know how to love ourselves when we don't feel loved and honored by other people. And so it's, I think when you're having a baby, that's a really big one. So may there always be sunshine. May there always be blue sky. May there, may there always be mama. May there always be me. Like a child's simple prayer, right? 
Okay, well, before we move on to some more serious topics and things, I mean, this is serious to me. It's very serious to me. Is um, affirmations and healing questions can be very, very helpful. Okay, so I'm going to just do a couple of those too. I am ready to do whatever it takes regarding the upcoming changes in my life. I am safe to feel what the change feels like. I'm safe to feel what the change feels like. And I'm ready to do what needs to be done for the change to happen. Like having a baby come into your life is a massive adjustment for both parents, right? And I think re being really okay with not going into like cognitive dissonance when something's too hard, being able to face it, deal with it, be okay with change and flow is going to help mothers a lot emotionally in the days to come and now. Okay, we'll do a couple more. I don't know who's here with me, but thanks for joining. Um, I am becoming stronger every day in every way. I am capable of doing things myself. I allow others the opportunity to grow from their unfavorable, unfavorable experiences, and I always grow from mine. And I don't shame myself. I trust that this is an important process of my growth and understanding and learning. I am learning how to navigate my entire brain and access new parts of my understanding. I'm excited about all the possibilities available to me. And I trust that I will naturally know what is right for me. And here's another couple of questions, okay? Those are affirmations.